Someone should sample those uh, <laughs> for a song. Here we go. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Pop of Color Live, a music industry late night show for colorful bands and artists. I am your host, Claire Charon, and you are, are all in for a treat today because I have a very special guest in my top corner, Dave Cool of Band Zoogle. Dave. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I've got a bit of a delay on my end, so I'm sorry if I talk over you in advance, Dave. <laughs> no worries. Dave true to, is true, very true to his name in the sense that David means beloved friend. Also cool is his actual last name. I looked up the meaning of David just to get you on that one, by the way. Nice. That is. You're welcome. That is very original. I've actually never heard that before. You, you definitely tricked me. <laughs> so we're doing things slightly differently this week. I'm going to start with our special guest so that he's off the hook after, and then I'll talk about the news, because we're doing fun with math after, and I don't need Dave to have to sit through that, but I do need you guys too, because this is going to be awesome. So, Dave, what do you do at Bansuko? Uh My official title is Director of Artists and Industry Outreach. Uh, what that involves is overseeing all of our uh, content marketing, so the blog, which is one of my primary roles, all the social media email marketing, and then I change hats and I oversee all of the partnerships uh, for the company. So we work with dozens and dozens of other music tech companies, music associations, music schools, uh, all throughout North America and the world. And so I manage those partnerships and do cross-promotion with a lot of those companies and associations and travel to conferences and things like that. So, uh, so a lot of different things, but they're all a lot of fun. So, so don't forget, because... Those of you who are tuning in live, we already have someone. Say hi in the comments. We, you are tuning in live, so we have Dave live here. So if you have any questions about artist website design, which is what this main feature is going to be on as part of the late night show, please don't hesitate to comment them in the video comment because we'll answer them on the spot. But let's start with the very basics. Why do artists need a website? Isn't social media good enough? Yeah, it's... Um... It's a question we get often, and there's a few reasons why musicians still need their own website. And social media is obviously great for a lot of things, and that could be a whole other discussion. But the reason to have your own website are, like, social media sites can come and go. Um, I don't know if anyone watching this is old enough to remember MySpace, but uh, MySpace was the biggest social media platform, and a lot of musicians built up their fan base on MySpace, and then seemingly kind of disappeared overnight, it stopped working, and, you know, people moved on to the next thing, which was Facebook, and there was no, you know, copy my fans from Facebook, uh, from MySpace to Facebook, so you had to really start over, whereas with a website, um, the biggest reason to have one is that you own that little slice of the internet, so as long as you keep renewing your domain name, your fans and the industry will always be able to find you there, so that's incredibly important. Uh, secondly, you own the experience, so you can design it, brand it, make it look however you want, and hopefully there's no ads and links and distractions and things like that like there are on social media. It's very focused on you and your music. And another few reasons to have a website would be that you own the data. So data is becoming increasingly important for musicians to pay attention to. And you can gather um, incredibly detailed data through your website. And we see the website and your email list sort of going hand in hand. But, you know, whatever data you're collecting from your website, the emails you're collecting through your mailing list, you own that data, and that can inform your marketing and promotional efforts, uh, what merch to sell, where to tour, where to book shows, things like that. So that's incredibly important. And the other main reason to have a website is that if you're selling direct, if you're selling your music, trying to earn a living, um, selling merch, selling tickets to shows, things like that, if you sell direct through your website, you're going to make more money by selling direct rather than using an outside platform that might take a percentage of your sales, things like that. So um, those would be kind of the four main reasons that um, artists should still, even in 2018, still have their own uh, website. And it's arguably more important than it ever has been. Excellent answer. <laughs> right, don't forget, if you have questions about websites below, please comment them. We are at three people watching so far. 
So I'm so excited. This is great. Most people come on the reruns, but for the lucky people who are here right now, oh, you guys are great because you will be able to ask questions and get them answered live by Dave Cool, Director of Artist and Industry Outreach at Banzoogle, a website building company for musicians. Now, Dave, uh, for the people who look at artists' websites, would you say most visitors are industry folk, like managers, booking agents, or fans? And for what artists, would they be better to design for one, for other, create two separate experiences, like, like a triage system? What would you say? Yeah, that's a good question. It, it really depends on the artist. Um... But you're going to get, a, any artist is going to get a mix of all of the above. You're really going to get three types of people visiting your site. You're going to have your current fans, so people who already know who you are, and they're going to want to see what's new, um, see what shows are coming up, things like that. You're going to have the potential fans. So someone, let, let's say you're um, opening up for a bigger name artist, and their fans visit your website to see if it's worthwhile showing up a bit earlier to the show to see the opening act. They're going to want to know who you are, what you're all about, listen to your music, that kind of thing. And then, like you mentioned, there's all the industry people, so booker, bookers, managers, agents, labels, all that fun stuff. They're also going to be visiting your website. And <clears throat> most industry will go to the website first and then check out your socials, but they want to see everything in one place, and so in terms of how to organize that content, um, you should have content that sort of suits all, all of those different types of people. Um, the industry really, it's a relatively simple um, solution, which is just, just to have a press kit page or EPK page on your site. That way someone in the media or booker can go straight to that one page, get your official bio, your music, um, press quotes, um, maybe watch you know, uh, one of your latest videos, that kind of thing, all on one page. For your current fans, they're going to want to know what's new. Uh, so having some updates on your website is very important. New music, new videos, new photos. And then for potential fans, just making sure that you're putting your best foot forward right on their homepage. So short bio, um, your latest music, latest video, upcoming shows, um, and a call to action to, so if people do like what they hear and see when they land on your website, that you're encouraging them to primarily sign up to your mailing list, getting back to the importance of data and building up your mailing list, data, your email database, but also it could be to um, contribute to a crowdfunding campaign or buy your latest song or buy tickets for an upcoming tour, that kind of thing. It really depends where you're at in your career at that moment, and that call to action should change um, over time, depending on what your priorities are. But yeah, getting back to the original question, it's important to keep all of those types of people in mind when you're putting together the content for your website. So, so you mentioned a homepage briefly as a place to put your best foot forward. What would you put on a homepage? How big would you want it? Like just whatever you see first on the homepage, several scrolls down, mobile, formatted for mobile, obviously. But what would you put on a homepage? Absolute um, essentials, really, bonuses, nice to haves. Yeah, so it really all flows. And this goes for the entire web design. But a home, the homepage is probably the most important page on your website, which I'm sure is why you're asking about it. Because it's where most people are going to land first. And so that's where you're going to give your first impression. So um, we always encourage musicians to invest more money in their photos than they are on their website. Because you can build a website <clears throat> with services like Google, You can build a website very affordably. But you can have the best content, best music, well-organized, clean layout, nice fonts, nice colors. But if your photos aren't professional and they don't match your brand, people are going to, whether you like it or not, even before they click play, they're going to a negative impression is going to be given if your photos just up, aren't up to the standard of, of uh, who you are as an artist and, and your music. So first and foremost, yeah. invest in not only professional photos, but invest in a concept as well, not just you know a typical headshot or things like that. Like work with a photographer, work with you know your, based on what you're doing with your artwork for your album, you know, come up with something that's unique to you that really speaks to who you are as an artist and your music and let that photography and those Im that imagery um, dictate uh, the, the rest of the website's design. So 
first and foremost, great photos. That's exactly. a must. Exactly. Uh, I don't care how good your music is. If your big photo on your website is a grainy iPhone selfie in a mirror, I'm not going to listen to it. Yeah, the one we the one we see the most often, I would say, or at least I would, that I see the most often in terms of bad uh, photos is people who put a live photo as their main header image or background image, but it's really poorly lit. Like the musicians aren't even in focus. You can't even see their faces. Taken but from like the back a friend of the dive bar. Yeah, ex- no, exactly. And then you see that they're they're gigging regularly, and you know, they, have their, you know, they have their they have things together, yeah, things together, together as a band, band. But you know, the you know, it was just a photo justice to justice. Besides that, I would say the music. So where you yeah. can just hit play as long as it doesn't start playing automatically. Correct. So you know, your auto op- players. No, <laughs> no. You know, it's funny. We we had auto start on our music, our site wide music players as a default function. From we've been around for fourteen and a half years now, and so auto play used to be the the you know the default. And then when we turned off that default, people freaked out. <laughs> we were doing it for their own good because it's really it's, it's you don't understand. We're doing it for you. <laughs> Well, that's part of it for sure. We left the option there, so anyone that can play, we're like, look, you can turn it back on. But as a default, because people visiting your website, chances are they might already be listening to other music. Maybe they're at work. Maybe they're in the library, and all of a sudden, you know, really no. loud music starts playing. It's you know, people will click stop, and they might not click play again. So let them, as long as you have a clear play button, and it should be on the home page, like you said. Um, they're on the, they're on your website. They land on your homepage. Uh, have a music player clearly on the homepage. Even a video, your latest video, or maybe your most popular video, right on your homepage, so that you're engaging them visually as well. So that's the next step: is having some kind of interactivity on the homepage, uh, so they can click play. Um, besides that, again, a call to action. You want to have that very prominent. You don't want people to have to scroll down for that call to action because everyone has, you know attention deficit disorder these days so they land on your own page don't make them scroll too far to have that call to action to encourage them to sign up to your mailing list if, if you're offering some kind of exclusive content exclusive music um make sure to have that call to action um prominent on the home page and then the other stuff is kind of minor you're going to want some latest news maybe your upcoming shows and your social links uh because socials are important and you know, people might only have a couple minutes to be on your website, but maybe they like what they've heard, they like what they see, and they want to connect with you on your uh, on their favorite social media platform. So just have those those uh, links there. Don't make them. I've seen them like act as like the almost the main navigation on websites. Like just make sure they're there and not taking up too much space on the page because people will recognize the logos. They'll click. They'll be fine. So you don't have to make it a prominent feature, but they should be there so people can connect with you uh, very quickly. Great. As to other pages, other pages on the website. So you got the um, home page, contact at the very end, what goes sandwiched in between? Yeah, exactly. So a bio page, super important. You want to be, your website is where you want to be able to tell your story. So writing a, having a great bio page and writing it in, there's two schools of thought. Um, if you write, if you're going to write it in first person, like you're speaking directly, to the person reading. Uh, that's great for fans and potential fans for industry, not so much. Um, because if you're getting booked at venues, at festivals, at conferences, they can't copy they're gonna, and paste that. They can't copy and paste that, correct. So I write bio. you want to have your official things. bio be in third person. Shameless plug, I'm a bio writer. There you go. So Keep going. Sorry, Dave. Hire Clara to, to write your bio and Thank it will be you. in third person. And well done. And so bio page, super important. And you can... On your bio page, it shouldn't just be text. You know, have some other imagery there. Have some quotes, media quotes, if you have them, to break up the text. Like, make it, you know, visually appealing as well. Um, obviously, a music page. So even though you have a music player on your home page, you're going to want a dedicated, dedicated page for your music where you're going to let fans stream your music, download your music, buy your music directly from you, um, maybe download free with an email address, that kind of thing. And if there's anywhere online that 
fans should be able to find all of your music, like your entire discography, it's on your website. So make sure your music page has all your music available, uh, your entire discography uh, right there on the music page. Then if you're a performing artist, obviously an events page or a shows page so yeah. that people can quickly find where your next show is. And that's also a great page. So that's one of the first pages that uh, booking bookers uh, and booking agents will look at because they're, if they're considering working with a, with a band, they're going to go to the events page or the shows page. And so make sure that's up to date. You have all your upcoming shows. And it's also a good place to put if you have, and this is, this is important, if you have a good quality live video, um, put that on the events page. And by good quality, I mean excellent visuals and excellent audio. Um, so if you have both of those, um, that's a great page to put that on because chances are, again, bookers are going to go to that page and they're going to click play. And if you, can, if you have a really great visual representation of what it's like to see you live, it's a great place to put it. Um, exactly. They don't know what, you, what you'll be like live energy-wise, stage presence-wise, no auto-tune-wise if you're just putting a stage music video there. Speaking of yeah. live, Leonard Patterson would like you to know that he loves the new EPK page template. Awesome. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so just to we try to make it a little bit easier. So we, we launched a whole bunch of uh, preset page templates, so store page, music page, and EPK was one of them, just to try to make it a little bit easier um, to suggest the layout and the types of features to put on. So I'm glad to hear that you're enjoying it. That's awesome. Now, in terms of other pages, um, you know, photos page, uh, this is where you're going to put, you know, um, all different types of imagery. So your official promo photos, maybe some live shots, even show posters, album covers, photos with fans, um, connect to your Instagram feed so that there's, you know, always some new content on there. Um, some people do photos and videos on the same page, which is okay, but I think they're both important enough to warrant their own page on a, on a website. So your videos page should have, of course, your latest videos, um, but even your most popular ones, even if they're older, again, it's all about putting your best foot forward. So making sure your most popular videos are on there. And if, you, if you're prolific with video, um, what you can do is put, you know, maybe six to eight videos on the videos page and then direct people to your YouTube channel um, to see the rest. Or you can embed playlists if there's different types of videos like covers, cover videos or live videos, that kind of thing. Because if you put dozens and dozens of videos on the page, it's overwhelming and it's going to slow down the load time no matter what their connection is, yeah, uh, especially yeah. on mobile devices. So you're going to want to be conscious of that when um, you're putting together the videos page. One note I want to put for the pages that you do, no, well, no matter what you do, please give them clear names as to what they actually are, like home, bio, oh, live, live, contact, because I have, inter I interviewed an artist once and their website, the pages were discover, be inspired, start your journey, and I'm like, Okay, but where's your bio? <laughs> yeah, super important. Well, I mean, there's there's room for there's creativity, and then there's annoying the booking agent. Hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. While we're on the subject you're... of creativity, let's move to the second half of you, your guest appearance. Just a little bit, some do's and don'ts for the actual aesthetic designs. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So, any questions? Pop them in the comments. You're watching live with Dave Cool of Banzoogle, so please, if you have any questions for him. Pop them in, I will read them out loud. Go for it, Dave. So some quick do's and don'ts. Um, one common mistake we see is, because uh, you know, musicians have a lot of content, and one common mistake is to try to put too much of it on a single page. So, you know, don't clutter the pages. Make sure you have a clean layout, that it's visually easy to scan. Um, if you have too much content on a page, uh, people won't be able to focus on anything in particular, so make sure that um, you have a clean layout. In terms of colors, you know, don't have too many colors on your website, Ex with the possible exception if you're doing children's, children's music, then super colorful, it's probably going to work. 
But other than that, you're really going to want to stick to three colors, like a primary color, a secondary color, and then a, a third color that, yeah, that kind of uh, blends in with the, the first or second. And if you stick to three colors as a general rule, you're going to do okay. If you start going to four, five, six, seven, eight different colors, it's the design is not going to look cohesive. It's not going to look really well branded. Um, Dude, don't have you use... ever seen the hot dog color scheme? No. <laughs> it's no. bright ducky yellow and fire truck red. Very 90s. <laughs> nice. Um, Enjoy and... sleeping tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and in terms of ty typography, don't use like wacky fonts on your website, like Comic Sans no or... No windings? Got it. Yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. I'm hurt. No, how about Papyrus? Definitely stick to, like... Yeah, definitely stick to, like, classic fonts. Um, definitely have contrast between the font color and the background. You want to make sure that your website, that the copy is readable. And, you know, don't put too much... Um, don't use, like, bold and italics and underline too much. Like... Italics maybe for quick quotes, but not entire bodies of text like your bio or things like that. So use use that kind of thing um, sparingly. And this goes back to something you mentioned, like clear navigation. Like, do you have clear navigation? So naming your your website um, yes. page sections clearly. We like to tell musicians that their music is their art, their website is their business, and so just keep it nice and straightforward. Um, and you mentioned this as well, definitely have, your website has to be mobile friendly. So do have a mobile friendly site. I mean, now, um, time on mobile devices has exceeded desktop. And so more and more people are going to be accessing your website from a mobile device. So you have to make sure it looks great on, on, um, a mobile phone, on a tablet device. Um, all of our templates are, and themes at Banzoogle are responsive. So, so they'll, um, automatically adjust to the screen size, but, Look at your, make sure to look at your website from a mobile device and make sure that you borrow um, your friend's mobile device that has a different screen size because an iPhone yeah. 5s is not the same as a Samsung Galaxy or a tablet. Yeah, exactly. And if you don't know if your website's mobile friendly, it's it's pretty easy to tell if you're looking on a phone and you have to do any pinching and zooming to be able to you know click on navigation or click on content. Chances are it's not mobile friendly. It should be pretty seamless and easy to navigate. Um, from a no, uh, mobile device. Um, and this is not really a design thing, but it's it goes back to one of the main points from the, from the beginning and, and something that we stress is definitely have direct-to-fan sales. Like once you have your fans on your website, make sure you have something to offer them, um, whether it's digital music, physical merch, tickets to shows, again, collecting that data and selling direct, making more money, but also collecting their email addresses so that you can build that relationship with them over the long term is uh, super important when you're putting together your website. While on the subject of direct to fan sales, Jimmy has a question for you, Dave. Is okay. there any plans in the, in the near future for, for a funnel-like page op option? Um, yeah, page funnels. It, it's been coming up a little bit more um, to have to, for us to create the ability to create like more classic like sales funnel type pages. Um, there's some internal debate about those right now at Banzoogle. Um, so they're not in the plans just yet, but it is being discussed internally. I think there was a meeting scheduled this week actually to talk about um different page types that don't have the navigation necessarily of the rest of the website, which those sales funnel type pages uh, would have. So not yet, but it's, it is being discussed. We are, we have a few members asking for it. It's not a super popular request to be honest. And we usually, you know, we have 35,000 uh, members. So, you know, every feature we build out is based on member feedback and, um, and the, the types of things that they want to be able to do with those features. So um, it's it's in there. It's not the one of the most popular ones, but it is uh, it's it's being discussed um, actively. I would say. Great question, Jimmy. Dave, I'm gonna let you go soon, and so then Sorry. I'm gonna get to the news. But is there anything else you want to bring up? People in the comment section who who are here live, anything you would like to ask or comment on before Dave I 
send Dave on his way to have the rest of his awesome Monday night. Oh, Jimmy says that's awesome. To your awesome. Discussion. Thanks. Thanks for the questions, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Um, no, nothing really else. I mean, we covered you know a lot of the basics. It's really most important thing is to have a website for your music and just try to keep it simple. If you need any advice or help with building your website, whether you're a Ben Zugel member or not, or thinking of using Ben Zugel, if you go to our blog, um, benzugel.com slash blog, there's a couple of different blog categories that's all about website design and website best practices for musicians. It's all free. So you can just browse through those articles. And um, even if you have any questions about web design, you can contact our support team. And uh, chances are they'll be able to point you to some uh, some resources that can help out. So, yeah, and got a lastly, fantastic blog. Thank you, appreciate that. I want that. to write for and, it one day. Just yeah, uh, keep <laughs> for sending sure. articles, and you'll keep saying that you recently did something similar. And then they'll <laughs> we be mine. The That's a small condolence. <laughs> keep going. We'll, we'll get you on there. We'll get you on there. But yeah, we cover a lot on the blog. It's um, it's something I'm uh, probably most proud of uh, being at the company for seven years. It's been that's what I was originally hired to do, and uh, it's it's a great resource, a free resource for for all musicians. But uh, lastly, I just want to thank you, Peter, for having me on. This was tons of fun. Nice to uh, chat, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Appreciate it. Thank you so so much, Dave. Okay, I'm going to. I managed to finally get the split screen, so now I'm going to kick you off the screen. Let's see what happens. So if I... Yes. Does that mean he's gone? Is it working? Is it working? Leonard Patterson would like you to know that you're one of the best blogs in the biz. Thanks, Dave. Awesome. Uh, thank you. You have not disappeared quite yet, so let's <laughs> figure this out. I, s I see your face. I am working on it. Should I, should I end the Skype call? Will that yes. remove me from the screen? Am <laughs> I still here? Okay, yeah. Why don't you end the Skype call, and I'm going to try to figure out how to do this. I'm so happy that you came, no matter what. I am working on this. Jimmy would like to say thanks, Dave, once again. Thank you. says, don't go. I still yeah. see you. Why don't you end the Skype call, and I'm going to try to <laughs> figure out how to do this. I'm so happy that you came, no matter what. I am ah, working that is. on this. Jimmy would like to ah. say thanks. All right. Careful. I'll say good night. Bye. Bye, Dave. Have a great night. See you next time you're in Ottawa. Yeah, definitely. Take care. Bye. Bye. So then, if I go to this, I'm okay. There's still two screens there. So what happens if scene two is removed? Is it working? People, let me know. I'm seen. Okay, the source. Okay, guys, thank you so much for bearing with me because I am really, really working on this. Then if I do. Video capture. Maybe it's in the video capture. Okay. What did I do? Guys, is it, is it working? Is it working? No. Okay. Dave is frozen. I am so, so happy. Oh, you. Nope. Okay, so okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to end this live video, and then I'm gonna add a do an add-on where um, then I'll I'll take the news, so then we can split it in two. Okay. Hey, okay, thank you so so much. I will be right back. Got it. Bye.